Hey friends, happy Friday and welcome back to another video. Today I have four easy and budget friendly Thanksgiving sides to share with y'all. I like making like really easy stuff for Thanksgiving and using my Instant Pot so that I can do other things while like what I have in the Instant Pot is cooking. Like very like hands off cooking, like just kind of like put it in there, let it do its thing and I don't have to worry about it. Like I don't have to worry about like watching the water come to a boil and put my noodles in for mac and cheese. Uh, same thing with like when I make my eggs. And then I also do my stuffing in the crock pot. I'm just really all about that. And like the reason we started doing the stuffing in the crock pot was to eliminate like one dish that would have to be made in the oven because I've got one oven and I just kind of try to make things all be done at around the same time and not have to make everything in the oven. So I'm excited to share this with y'all today. Y'all have been asking for it for years, but I never want to film it on Thanksgiving. So this is the first time I've actually like sat down and made it before Thanksgiving. First up, we have the stuffing or dressing, whatever you want to call it. It's not actually stuffed into a bird, but we are just using some box stovetop or store brand stuffing mix. I'm using the turkey flavor this time, but I really like the herb flavored one from Aldi. And I'm just going to take that, add it to my crock pot. And the measurements that I'm going to give you are for one box of stuffing. On Thanksgiving, I usually do like two to three boxes of stuffing, depending on how many people are here. So I would just like double or triple everything that I'm adding. So one box of stuffing, one cup of chicken broth, half a cup of celery diced, half of a small onion diced, and a fourth a cup of melted butter. And you just mix that all together really well, make sure everything is combined. And then you're gonna put a lid on this on the crock pot and cook it on low for four to five hours and you're gonna stir it once halfway through. And this is what it looks like when it's done. All of the veggies get soft. It is delicious and it saves me from having to worry about this later. It's just like there in the crock pot, ready to go when we have Thanksgiving dinner. I found this recipe like three years ago and we've been making it ever since. We, my family all loves it brother, sister, everybody who's come over loves it. It's just a simple, inexpensive way to doctor up some really cheap stuffing that you can get. Like right now, I think they're on sale for like 69 cents. So you can feed a crowd with some stuffing for really cheap. Next up, we have some glazed carrots. A couple years ago, we found this recipe to make because we wanted some more like veggies as part of Thanksgiving. Like I don't like green bean casserole. So like really the only thing for me to eat that was veggies uh, besides like mashed potatoes was broccoli casserole. So then we started making carrots because we also don't do like corn casserole. Although we tried one of those last year, not everybody really ate it. So I think we'll stick with the carrots. Before this, you just need one and a half pounds of carrots peeled and cut into half inch thick slices. And then you're going to add that to a pot with one and a half cups of water, just enough to cover the carrots. And then you're going to bring that to a boil and let it simmer for eight to 10 minutes or until the carrots are tender. And then once they are tender, if there's still a lot of water, you can drain it off. You don't have to, but you can. This time I did not because I felt like a lot of the water had like kind of cooked out. So then you're just going to add in a fourth a cup of butter, a fourth a cup of brown sugar, some salt and some parsley, and then just let it cook for another four to five minutes. And then these are ready to serve. I usually like get them ready and then leave them on a low heat just so that they can stay warm. But these are one of the last things that I cook on Thanksgiving day because they don't take very much time at all. 
Next up we have mac and cheese. And this is not actually the recipe that we have made the past few years on Thanksgiving. My sister is actually usually in charge of the mac and cheese, but hers is more like a buttery mac and cheese. And it has a ton of different kinds of cheeses in it. So I wanted to do one of my simpler baked mac and cheese recipes to share with you for this video because I just wanted to keep it more budget friendly and easy. So I like to make my pasta in the Instant Pot. I do this like pretty much anytime I make mac and cheese, but I put equal parts elbow noodles and water or broth. I prefer to do broth for more flavor. So I did four cups of elbows, four cups of chicken broth, and then a tablespoon of butter. And then you stir that around Put the lid on it and cook it on high for four minutes if you were not going to be baking the mac and cheese i usually do five minutes but because i wanted them a little bit more like less done because i knew that they would be going in the oven so i just did them for four minutes and then do a quick release while that was cooking i worked on the sauce so for this i'm going to start off by melting a fourth a cup of butter and then when that's melted i added in a fourth a cup of flour and let that cook for about two minutes And then I'm going to whisk in one and a half cups of milk, one can of evaporated milk, one teaspoon of dry mustard, half a teaspoon of paprika, and some salt and pepper. And I cooked that over medium heat until it got thickened. You want this to coat the back of a spoon, but you also want to make sure you're stirring it often just to kind of watch it. You don't want to burn the milk. So once it gets nice and thick, make sure you taste it, check and see if you need to add any more seasonings, and then you can turn off the heat and add in your cheese. I shredded up one eight ounce block of sharp cheddar and one eight ounce block of Colby Jack, and I put the majority of that in here for our cheese sauce. I reserved about a third of the cheese, maybe about a cup of cheese, to use for the top of the mac and cheese. So then here is the pasta once it was done. As you can see, I did a quick release, released all of that steam, opened up the lid, and just kind of stirred everything around. There's a little bit of liquid in there, not enough to drain. You're just going to take those noodles, stir them around, break them up. They don't really stick together too much. And then I dumped those in my cheese sauce and got them nice and coated with the cheese. And then I transferred that to a baking dish you can use a 9 by 13 this one isn't quite that long it's a little bit deeper than it is long but I got all my mac and cheese in my baking dish and then I put on the rest of the shredded cheese and then in a little bowl I'm going to mix together two tablespoons of melted butter with a fourth a cup of panko for topping and then I'm going to spread that over the top of the casserole and then this goes in the oven at 425 for 20 minutes and here's what that looked like when it came out. Super gooey and bubbly. And I just let it sit for a few minutes before serving. And it turned out great. I have made this recipe before. It's just not usually the one I make on Thanksgiving because I let my sister uh, be in charge of the mac and cheese. But this is good. It's not dry. It's super cheesy. And it even reheats really well. And finally, the last side that I have to share with y'all today is the best deviled eggs. We like our deviled eggs simple, but these are our favorite recipe. 
So I start off by making them in the Instant Pot. I use the 555 method. So I get my eggs in there. I'm just going to do six today. And I get them on the trivet and I dump in one cup of water. And then I put my lid on my Instant Pot and let that cook for five minutes. And then after cooking for five minutes, I let it do a natural release for five minutes. And then I release the rest of the steam. And then after all the steam has been released, I take the eggs out and stick them into an ice bath for five minutes. After that, then you can peel them and they come out clean every single time. So easy to peel. Since I got an Instant Pot, I have not made boiled eggs any other way. They come out great every time. And so then, you know, you just peel all your eggs and then you can have all your eggs and take the yolks out and set them in a separate bowl. And then I add in two tablespoons of mayonnaise, one tablespoon of mustard, one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, a little splash of some hot sauce, and then salt and pepper. And then I just mash that all up really well, make sure to get it pretty smooth. And then I used to absolutely hate piping the filling into the deviled eggs, but then I figured out you could just put a Ziploc bag inside of a cup. I don't remember where I learned that tip. It might have been one of y'all like years ago, but ever since that's like the only way I do it now. I put the Ziploc bag in there, fill it up with the filling, and then you can just use it like a piping bag, cut off the tip, and fill all of your deviled eggs. And then I just sprinkle them with some paprika. And then that's it. They're super simple. We don't like relish or anything in them, but a little bit of like hot sauce and Worcestershire sauce in there gives them a lot of flavor and they are delicious and my favorite deviled eggs ever. But that is going to do it for today's video. I hope that y'all enjoyed it. I hope that you got some inspiration for some things to maybe try to help make your Thanksgiving easier. Um, I'm all about easy and like low fuss because I don't like to be stressed out. So hopefully these tips can help you. And if you need any more help, I'm happy to try to answer any questions or help you in the comments down below. As always, I hope that y'all have a good weekend and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.